Connor Zilich lives up to the hype. Plus, Corey Day is making his NASCAR debut really soon. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Well, I'm not actually a fiberglass Bearcat, but the Cincinnati Bearcats did beat rival Miami today to bring the victory bell back to Clifton. So we're celebrating that with the Bearcat statue that currently lives in my family room. Certainly not weird. Certainly has not scared the absolute living hell out of me coming down the stairs in the middle of the night at times, but it exists. Nice to not be a fiberglass Bearcat. Now back to the actual racing that happened this weekend. Connor Zilich li absolutely lived up to the hype. Who does he think he is? The Ty Gibbs of the NASCAR Xfinity Series because he goes out and wins in his first ever NASCAR Xfinity Series start at 18 years old. He was born in 2006. If you want to feel old, just think about what you were doing in 2006. I was in high school and man, do I feel super old now. That Connor Zilich is in victory lane, and I'm talking about Connor Zilich at this point, but he had an absolute up and down day in Watkins Glen. He's fastest in practice by a decent amount. He wins the pole. Okay, he won the pole for the truck race at Coda, blew the first corner there. Well, the same thing happened to him on Saturday at Watkins Glen. It would not. He survived that and absolutely dominated stage number one. They didn't even bother to try to flip the stage. They're like, we're just going to go ahead and win this stage, and we'll probably be able to win the race as well. And he was able to do that, but it didn't come without some adversity, though, because because a little bit, what, halfway-ish through the race, a caution comes out, and Ty Gibbs is leading. Sam Mayer is in second, and Connor Zilich is in third as he's trying to work his way back through the field uh, after, you know, pitting there for at the stage break. And Ty, Sam, and Connor drive through the bus stop during the caution and not around the bus stop as they're supposed to. So they shortcut the course, and NASCAR's like, listen, guys, you got to go to the back, to which Connor responded, F, I was just following them which makes sense. He did, in fact, follow them, but that's against the rule. So he had to go to the back and he was able to drive back through the field and stretch his fuel as long as possible. If there would have been another green-white checker, he does not end up winning this race. But with six laps to go, known enemy of brake hard, Matt Benedetto breaks down in the bus stop. He comes to a complete stop. NASCAR throws a caution. That sets up a green-white checker finish, and it's the Xfinity series, right? So you know what happens on green-white checkers. Chaos ensues, and that's exactly what happened down in turn one on the restart. Chaos does ensue. A ton of fluid gets laid down. We have more kitty litter out there than a PetSmart has, and it took forever to clean up. I mean, genuinely seemed like it took absolutely forever. I went to a street fair, pulled my phone back out, and I was like, oh, this is still happening now. And that was a solid half an hour, 40 minutes, it felt like, uh, at that point. They get back to racing on the next green-white checker attempt. Uh, Connor is able to make it all the way around and take the white flag, and then a massive accident happens on the backstretch. Riley Herbst gets turned sideways, catches Austin Green, and then chaos ensues behind him. Caution comes out. Should be Connor Zilich's race, right? Right? Well, it would be. He has to keep up a minimum speed, though, a reasonable speed. Can't be flying, but can't be also putting around as he tries to save fuel. Sheldon Creed knows this, and Sheldon Creed pulls up alongside him, and he's like, let's go, dude. He's like, we're we're running a pace here. You can't go this slow. Trying to run, trying to run Connor Zilch out of fuel. Sheldon Creed, a habitual second-place finisher. Everybody knows that. Didn't want to finish second again. Really wanted that 88 to run out of fuel. He did not. Connor Zilich ends up taking the checkered flag and wins the race in his first ever start. And for the 18-year-old, I mean, he's the most hyped prospect right now in NASCAR, right? The kid wins in everything he's he's raced in this year. He hasn't won in the trucks yet, but he's won the Xfinity Series, won an ARCA, he's won a Trans Am, MX-5 Cup, LMP2, Cars Tour. Like I said, kid wins in everything he's been in this year. Wouldn't be shocked to see him win a truck race at some point too. But for Connor Zilich, it just solidifies all the hype that is around him. And I mean, the kid's going to be an Xfinity full-time next year with JRM on loan from Trackhouse. High likelihood we see him in the Cup Series in 2026. I mean, do remember that Daniel Suarez only signed a one-year deal. Connor Zilich lived up to the hype on Saturday. Not to get lost in all the hype around Connor Zilich, Shane Van Gisbergen, remember him? Really good road course racer, everybody's favorite Kiwi. Yeah, he got a speeding penalty on lap 67 got sent to the back uh, on that uh, restart ends up coming all the way back through the field for a top five finish there's only 82 laps in this race obviously it went a little bit long there with green white checker but not long enough to really warn how just incredible he had um a time coming back through the field on on saturday so hats off to svg sheldon creed will maybe eventually get that first win right he did lock himself into the playoffs 
Right now, Parker Kligerman and Sammy Smith both go into Bristol on Friday night, uh, the final race of the regular season for the Xfinity Series, sitting with pretty comfortable cushions, uh, barring something absolutely catastrophic happening to them. But Connor Zilich, hat off to him. That kid absolutely went out there and did it so much faster than everybody else. I mean, at one point, Justin Allgaier is like, I don't know how he's going this much faster. I mean, even his crew is listening to the radio and TJ Majors is like, hey, give us another football field that you're backing off. He's like, you gave up a second and actually didn't lose time on that last lap, which was true. He was still gaining time as he was saving fuel. And when asked at the end there, you know, how he thought from his crew chief, Andrew Overstreet, he said, I saved you a shit ton. And Andrew's like, yeah, man, you're the best driver here. Go out and show him. And that's what they did. So hats off to Connor Zilich. Uh, really cool for him to get that done. Now he's got to go in on an oval in the Xfinity series. We knew it'd be good on road courses. Let's see him on ovals now. Also, if you like the content that you see in video form on YouTube and TikTok, you might be interested in seeing what I have in written form. I do have a blog up and running now. You can check the link in the bio as well. Uh, it's on Substack. You don't have to pledge any money. It's free. Don't pay attention if you get a little pop-up that asks you about that. But yeah, read it, check it out. I'm planning on posting a couple times a week. Uh, just another outlet for, for my brain. And moving on to the other really hype prospect in the Chevy pipeline, that being Corey Day. He might only have two asphalt uh, races to his credit so far, but the kid is a much hyped prospect. He just picked up his eighth high limit series victory of the season on Friday night at Lernerville, a series high eight victories at that. And he'll be making his second ever ARCA start on Thursday night at Bristol. He'll also be making his first ever NASCAR truck series start on Thursday night at Bristol as well, likely driving for that McAnally team in that 91 truck that we've seen Zane Smith, um, Jack Wood and others drive this year. Expect to see, expect to see Corey Day in that truck on Thursday night. And that will be his, what, fourth ever pavement race at that point. And it'll become in the truck series at Bristol. I mean, if you want to talk about baptism by fire, it's a pretty good way to do it. Having his second ever start be uh, Salem on the high banks in the Arca series. Granted, the competition's really not that strong in Arca this year, but Salem itself is super intimidating. And he showed a ton of speed, was likely going to finish second in that race before clearing himself off the corner, catching LeVar Scott and ending his day after Tony Bridinger came absolutely flying in there and clobbered him. He'll now make his third ever pavement start on Thursday night at Bristol in the Arca series and then his fourth ever start in the truck series. Also expect him to make an Xfinity series start this year as well for Hendrick Motorsports. He has a ton of supporters over at Hendrick Motorsports, whether it's Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon, Kyle Larson, that entire team is very much behind Corey Day. Expect him to have a very heavy pavement schedule in 2025 as well, potentially across Arca trucks and Xfinity, depending on what day of the week it is. It sounds like he has going to have a pretty heavy schedule next year as well. Hype prospects are having a great time right now in NASCAR, and they're getting hired on talent, which is always a good thing at that. Connor Zillich doesn't bring a ton of money with him, if any, at all. Um, I mean, heck, for his first ever Trans Am start, Kevin Harvick had to cover the uh, cover the waiver for him and um, the damage waiver as well. He put out the money for that. On the Corey Day side of things, HendrickCars.com is hopping on to sponsor him in these starts as well in on pavement. So, yeah, it's good to see guys getting hired on talent. Good to see the driver development pipeline start to come back to life with drivers that are here on talent, not necessarily because they bring budget. Nothing wrong with bringing budget. I just like to see guys that you know don't have the opportunity. Um, you know, in the luxury of bringing budget along to also be able to get these opportunities like we're seeing. So hats off to both of those guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about Connor Zilich, his first ever win, as well as Corey Day making his ARCA start on Thursday night at Bristol, as well as a truck series start as well. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog. Plus, I am now writing a blog, actually. Uh, link is in the bio, or link is in the description below. Not the bio, in the description below. I'm going to post a few times a week there. You can even subscribe to have it delivered to your inbox as well.